Welcome back to Gaelic Games Fan TV. Kerry, 18 points. Cork, 112. Kerry survive a, a bit of a scare. Probably not as big of a scare as what Galway got against Sligo, in all honesty. But Kerry do manage to get over the line against Cork. We'll update that score. Uh, 18 points to 112 is how it finished. And um, yeah, look, I mean, the game probably a lot closer than people expected. A lot of people expecting Kerry to blow Cork completely out of water to beat them very, very comfortably, to put down a bit of a marker now uh, had a championship. Obviously, Kerry, having not played a game, of course, since their final league game against Galway, which feels about, what, three, four weeks ago now at this stage. Um, and look, fair play to Cork. Cork came, they brought the energy, they brought the intensity, and they gave a real, real battle to Kerry. And you know what? Like, as much as we, you know, discredit and, and maybe Cork get a bit of criticism sometimes, throughout their Division 2 league campaign and everything else, they always give a good game at Kerry. And I remember saying this in the preview show, other podcasts and everything else, like mentioning that Cork always do tend to raise their game against Kerry. They always tend to give them a bit of a game. And this was absolutely no different. They really, really brought it from the very first whistle. And Kerry were a little bit rattled in the first half. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Paul Walsh gets a goal. Connor Cur Connor Corbett. What am I saying? I was going to say Connor Turbett. That's the wrong one. Connor Corbett. Brilliant score, obviously from him early on as well. Kerry did respond with four points on the bounce uh, on the bounce to level it up. But then Cork regained control. Brian Hurley, absolutely outstanding performance from him. Eight points in total. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, and, and Kerry struggled. Like Daniel O'Mahony, who was picking up David Clifford, kept turning David Clifford over, kept winning the ball back. Um, maybe one or two uncharacteristic errors from Clifford that you wouldn't normally see. Um, and I think it, you could probably tell first game for Kerry in the championship, first game for a couple of weeks, there was an element of rustiness. There was a few chances that they missed that you'd usually uh, see them score. Um, like Sean O'Shea missing one or two uncharacteristic frees and just a few other chances sort of going to begging. Um, do you know what, though? Cork missed the trick because Kerry were struggling in the first half. They weren't really up to the intensity of the game. And there was an opportunity for... If Cork... You felt like Cork should have went in three, four, maybe five points up at half time. in all honesty, for the amount of work that they put into it. But they just allowed Kerry to stick in the game. And I think that was the, the big issue because if Cork could have had a three, four, five-point lead, it makes the game plan in the second half in terms of going more zonal getting a lot of men behind the ball and trying to sort of allow Kerry to have the possession and try and, you know, because that's what Cork done in the second half. They basically got every man behind the ball and they said, look, listen, you try and break us down from here and we're going to try and frustrate the living daylights out of you. And Cork just didn't have a big enough lead, in my opinion, to be doing that. They should have kept with the same sort of man-to-man -man sort of chaotic style that they had in the first half where they really, really went for Kerry's throw. And we just didn't really see that, in all honesty. Um, look, fair play to Kerry. They dug deep. They got the result. They got over the line. Um, we saw a similar game last year between Kerry and Cork. Kerry got over the line uh, in the end and still look pushed on to win a, an all or get to an all or final, not win it, obviously. Um, so all in all, like it's... Some people might look at this and some Kerry fans and neutral GA fans might look at this and think, oh, Kerry looked a little bit vulnerable here. They looked a little bit sluggish. I wouldn't really read too much into it. Um, I think the most important thing for Kerry is just getting the win. And look, they'll win the Munster final. Then they'll go into the all Ireland series. You won't see Kerry make the same mistakes that they did in the first half um, when it gets to latter part of the all Ireland series. I'm very, very sure of that. I'm very, very sure of that. Um, and look, Cork just didn't didn't capitalize on it. They just didn't capitalize on those chances. Connor Cor Connor Corbett missed a, a couple of uh, opportunities in the first half. Um, you know, a few other opportunities dropping short. They just gave the ball away in poor areas in the second half. Um, and just in key moments, they couldn't quite get over the line. Um, look, in the end, Kerry get over the line. Tom O'Sullivan very good. Three points uh, from him. Graham O'Sullivan with a point. Killian Burke played very well as well in the first half. Uh, Paul Ganey, who came off the bench, got himself a score. Um, but yeah, big opportunity missed for Cork. Like what's mad is Kerry didn't lead in this game until the 50th minute. Um, and, and and they never really looked back after that. Do you know, like the chance obviously from Brian Hurley at the end with the free. If they could have kept it at least at a one score game, 
you never know. You know, we we, we remember from 2020 the, the late goal from Marquine and everything else, and you felt like, you know, like this was going to go really down to the war, but Kerry just about done enough. Like just looking at Cork in general, actually, in the second half, they they only scored, I think, four points in the second half. Uh, Brian Hurley with two, Brian Hurley with three, just one point from play in the second half for Cork. And that's ultimately, I think, where they let themselves down. But um, Kerry got the job done. They get the win. Um, it's, it's not a game that will live in the memory from a Kerry perspective. But look, good to see Cork and Kerry be competitive. Good to see, because after all the chat about provincial championships and everything else, you know, and I know Dublin Mead gets a lot of slack and everything else. That rivalry is very much died a, a slow death. But Kerry and Cork really shouldn't be any different. Do you know, like Kerry are one of the top Division One teams in the country, one of the best teams in the country. Cork are a mid-level Division Two side. I wouldn't really think there's much between Cork and Mead. Yet Cork always raise their game against Kerry. And look, maybe it's because the Crow Park factor isn't a thing. Um, in, in fairness, like they do. I know this was in Fitzgerald Stadium, but. Um, but yeah, look, Cork will take confidence from this going into the All Ireland series. They're the type of team that they benefit playing better teams, if that makes sense. Um, I think, like, if Cork were playing clear today, they probably would have struggled. Or if they were playing Limerick or something like that, I know they played Limerick the last day, but they were very slow out of gates against Limerick. Let's not forget they were losing at half time. So Cork are a strange team. Funnily enough, um, they were saying this in, in GA Go on commentary. This is the first time all year that Cork were actually leading at half time and it was against Kerry. Like that is the most Cork thing I think I've ever seen. Uh, it really, really is. A few comments here. Gaelic guy says, surely Sligo can't hold on. For fuck's sake, I jinxed it. jinxed it. Yeah. You feel so sorry for Sligo. Obviously the game wasn't on TV, but keeping an eye on it and Scorpio and everything else. And they were leading by three going into injury time, I think. And then they ended up losing by two. Just so, so unfortunate to Sligo for Sligo. Haven't beaten Galway since 2010 in championship, and it doesn't really get bigger than that. You know, what an opportunity. A bit like Wicklow last week. The only difference is Sligo are building something. They have a young team, um, and I don't think they're going anywhere. Do you know that way? So, um, and look, Sligo will go into that Halchin Cup maybe now as the favourites or one of or a side that you would definitely look at that can win it, uh, in my opinion. So, Look, massive congratulations to, uh, to to Galway for getting over the line. Robert Finnerty won five. I think Shane Walsh was back and kicked the points. Um, but look, in the end, you, you know there was one. You know Cork were leading Kerry a half time. Sligo were leading Galway a half time. Um, what's mad as well is that Galway, the only time they ever led in the game, was when Robert Finnerty scored that late goal. You know, and and that's looking from reports and everything else. I might be wrong on that, but. That's just mental, isn't it? That's just mental. And a half time in both Kerry and Cork and Sligo go away. Sligo and Cork both winning. And you were thinking, could it happen? You didn't think it would happen, but maybe you thought at least one of them would, would happen. And it hasn't it hasn't quite transported in the end. Um, but look, on a day where Kerry were supposed to be Cork comfortably and Galway were supposed to beat Sligo comfortably, at least we got two exciting games and two games that went down to the war a little bit. Um, and hopefully. We get the same for Derry and Dunny Gall. So, yeah, look, we'll wrap this up here. I'll be going live again at 6 o'clock. I'll be doing a watch-along for the Dunny Gall Derry game, so make sure you tune in for that. Very much looking forward to that. Um, hopefully, that game can live up to the hype and live up to the billing. Gavin says, absolute heartbreak for the underdogs. Yeah, complete, complete heartbreak there from a uh, Cork perspective and for Sligo. So, yeah, look, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Cheers, anyone who tuned in. We'll be live again at 6 o'clock, so we'll chat to you all then.